you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> And today's Daily Dose of Stupid is brought to us by Representative Sheila Jackson. Sheila Jackson tries to talk to us about guns, and we'll go through it. And, and as usual, when politicians, especially Democrats, try to talk about guns, they wind up showing more of their ignorance than their knowledge about them. So we'll go ahead and look at this clip from Sheila Jackson. I've held an AR-15 in my hand. I wish I had it. It is as heavy as 10 boxes that you might be moving. Uh, and the bullet that is utilized, a 50 caliber, these kinds of bullets, uh, need to be licensed and do not need to be on the streets. 90% of the people want background checks. Over 60% want a ban on assault weapons. 80% plus want red flag laws. And um, I would venture to say those numbers would be similar for storage laws and for licensing laws regarding uh, the question of firearms and ammunition. And finally, interestingly enough, Americans support the buyback program, which all of us could have in our respective communities. So that's Sheila Jackson. And uh, <laughs> uh, you can't make this stuff up. They just uh, constantly, it's a gift that they give conservatives where they constantly talk about guns and show over and over again, how very, very little they know about the subject to which they are discussing. So here's the thing. If Sheila Jackson's AR-15 that she allegedly held, if that thing was as heavy as 10 boxes, like 10 moving boxes, then either that thing had a really, really big dumbbell tied to the end of it, or Sheila Jackson is super out of shape. <laughs> and and 10, 8 to 10 pounds feels like 10 boxes that you would move. I guess that's the only explanation that I can come up with because she's she's clearly not in great shape, but it shouldn't feel like moving 10 boxes when you pick up an AR-15. It's one of the lighter guns that you actually can carry. It's no heavier than my shotgun. In fact, my shotgun might be a little heavier than it is. So to put in perspective how incredibly wrong Sheila Jackson is, I have this picture here. This is Cheyenne Roberts. She's a 10-year-old girl holding an AR-15. By the way, excellent trigger discipline there, Cheyenne. Uh, excellent form. She is a competitive shooter, and you can tell by the way that she's, she's holding it, this isn't something that's all that heavy. She's a 10-year-old little girl. So either she is the strongest 10 little girl in human history, or she's able to very comfortably hold 10 moving boxes. Uh, you can, I'll leave it up to you to decide what that is. And uh, she also postulated that the AR-15 fires 50 caliber rounds. It does not. And to show you how far off she was, this is Sheila Jackson with her AR-15. By the way, probably knows a lot more about firearms than I do. She custom built this particular AR-15. So, uh, you know, props to her on that. This is a M10 sniper rifle to compare. This actually does fire 50 caliber rounds. And remember, Sheila's a 10-year-old girl. These soldiers that you're seeing in the picture with the M10 rifle, they're full-grown military men. <laughs> so uh, they, they look pretty different just looking at the pictures but they're even it's an even larger difference when you remember how much bigger the guy holding the m10 is so clearly there is a size difference there with a firearm that, that fires a 22 caliber like an ar-15 and fires a 50 cal like the m10 sniper rifle and this just again highlights how very very little democrats know about guns sheila jackson in particular thinking that the <laughs> that the AR-15 fires 50 rounds, uh, 50 caliber rounds. To my knowledge, every AR-15 fires a 223, so about about a, a 22 caliber round. And most hunting rifles, to put that into perspective, use 30. And when you consider that, and by the way, this isn't just my opinion or something that I'm throwing out there. According to American Hunter, which is a, a magazine and a publication that, that does things on hunting, 
they had a list of their top 11 most popular hunting rounds. Of these, nine were larger than the 223 ammo that AR-15s use, and not a single one was smaller. Not one. Every single hunting round that they recommended was either the same size or larger than the rounds that are used by the AR-15. I know that the Second Amendment is about hunting. That's not the point that I'm trying to make here. I understand it's about self-defense. It's about the defense from a tyrannical government specifically. But I'm saying even if it were about hunting, and they're saying, well, you should only be able to use hunting rounds, yet yeah, the hunting rounds are bigger than what the AR-15 fires. Now, they're not 50 caliber like that sniper rifle that we just saw, but they are significantly larger than the 223 ammo that the AR-15 uses. In fact, some shooters refer to the 223 as a varmint round because it's not as big as what you would use to take down an elk, any kind of big game, even white-tailed deer, because this 11, top 11 rounds that I'm using here, it was specifically for white-tailed deer hunting. And all the ammo that they recommend out of the 11, nine of them are larger than the 223. So even if it were about hunting, you're way off, Sheila Jackson. You're not even in the same realm as correct. And what's hilarious about all this is she was saying all this to establish authority. In other words, what she's trying to convey to the people listening, oh, see, I'm, I'm not somebody that doesn't know about guns. I know about guns. I've held an AR-15. I know that there's no reason that people should be able to hold a, uh, to be able to own a gun that heavy, which is a little confusing because why would banning a gun because it's heavy have anything to do with it? Even if the AR-15 really were super heavy and hard to carry, why would that be a reason to outlaw it? That doesn't make any sense. Now, at least the next part of what she's saying, that, well, it fires a 50 caliber round, well, that would make it very destructive. That would make it a very powerful gun. I don't think that that's necessarily a reason to outlaw it. But the point is, at least I can understand from that perspective what you're saying is it's a very destructive heavy round, but the thing is they don't use that. They don't use anything close to that. The The caliber uh, round that a AR-15 uses isn't even half the size of a 50 caliber round. And so it just continues to show her ignorance on this, even though she was saying it specifically to try to establish that she was not a buffoon when it comes to guns. She proved herself to actually be a buffoon when it comes to guns. And when it comes to her stats about public support, let's look at those. They're all based on vague terms or incomplete information. For example, she said 90% of people want background checks. Yeah, well, we have those. We have background checks. We have for a very long time. This was established back in the 70s. And, I mean, with the, with the Gun Control Act, th this is something that has been going on since long before I was even born, long before I was even conceived. My parents were young when the background checks were implemented. We've had those for a really long time. Uh, when it says the uh, people support the ban of assault weapons, what's an assault weapon? Can you define that? Because if you're talking about the assault weapons ban of the 90s, whether people supported it or not, statistics have shown over and over again it didn't do any good. It didn't actually bring down crime. It didn't actually stop mass shootings. In fact, mass shootings were more common in the 90s when the assault weapons ban was in place than they are now. Schools are safer now, less likely to have mass shootings or mass casualties from said sh shootings. And assault weapons, according to that definition, well, those were actually used in some of the mass shootings in the 90s. So apparently it didn't keep people from getting their hands on them. When it comes to a red flag law, depends on what you mean by red flag law. There are some red, red flag laws that I would support. Generally speaking, when you're talking about the state-implemented red flag laws, most of those I don't. But conceivably, you could come up with a red flag law that I'd at least consider. There was one that was proposed in Alabama that I wound up ultimately being against. But the point is, I thought that it, it at least came from a place of reason. There were at least a few compelling arguments to implement that one. But... What do you mean by red flag laws? Because if we're talking about that kind of red flag law, okay, I can see where you're coming from. If you're talking about most of them, I would say, no, that's not even a starter for me. 
So what do you mean by red flag law? That can mean a lot of different things. What do you mean by buyback? Because most people, when you talk about buyback programs, they think about the ones we have here in America, where a bunch of government officials use government money to buy back firearms from people, which I agree is dumb and it's unproductive and it doesn't do anything to curb crime. But at the very least, it's not taking advantage of anybody's rights. It's not forcing anybody to have their guns taken away. But now you've got several Democrat candidates, three of them, in fact, talking about mandatory buybacks. In other words, what Australia did, where they're saying, no, you have to turn in your guns or you're in violation of the law. So what does buyback mean? If you're talking about the other kind of buyback, I think they're dumb, but I don't think that they're a violation of the Second Amendment. The other one clearly is. And so, again, you're, all of these things that she's saying are based off of these vague terms or people with incomplete information. If you make a term vague enough, you can make it seem as though people support pretty much anything. And let's look at this last claim. I love this. I would venture to say those numbers are similar for storage laws and licensing firearms and ammo. Well, venture to say means, oh, I don't know. I would guess. That's another way of saying that. Maybe she's right. I don't know, but she doesn't know either. So why bring it up? To the, the people that I've talked to, even people on the left that I've talked to about storage laws, they're not on board with those. And they're also not on board with licensing firearms or having a national gun registry. I have friends that are on the left, some that are even claimed to be socialists, that still say, no, we shouldn't have a national gun registry. That defeats the purpose of the Second Amendment. And that really brings me to my final point on this. Yes, Sheila Jackson is a moron. And yes, everything she said in that short little 45-second clip was completely wrong. Or at the very least, maybe it was right, but it was incredibly misleading. The stuff about what the, the actual functionality of the, the firearm she was talking about was completely wrong, wasn't even close to right. But even if everything she said in that clip was true, even if every word was the truth. None of it matters because we have a Second Amendment. Even if AR-15s really were super heavy, so the Second Amendment doesn't say the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, well, except if the gun's like super heavy and stuff. It's not how the Second Amendment reads. It doesn't say, well, except for 50 caliber rounds. AR-15s don't fire that, but even if they did, it's still not a reason to ban it. It's still not a reason to outlaw it. The Second Amendment also doesn't read, well, if there's a lot of people that don't like the fact that people are owning certain guns, then you should be able to infringe on it. It doesn't say that. When it all comes down to it, Sheila Jackson may not know anything about guns, but whether she does or not, she's ignoring the Second Amendment and the God-given right to self-preservation and the ability to defend yourself. So, yeah, she's dead wrong. But the truth is, even if she were right, it still wouldn't make any of those arguments make sense. Because from a constitutional perspective and from a human rights perspective, we still have a right to keep and bear arms. End of story. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, 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 it's like Obamacare. So you gotta subscribe to find out what's on it.